Today's adventure brings us to the great state of Michigan, Livonia, Michigan, to be exact, the home of Roush. How's it going, y'all? I'm in town for the NASCAR weekend at Michigan International Speedway. I also stopped by Berlin Raceway in Grand Rapids last night for the Superstar Racing Experience, but I grew up a Roush NASCAR fan. Well, more specifically, a 17 fan, but I pulled for most of the Roush guys. Also, I'm a total idiot. I mentioned it's NASCAR race weekend. I didn't even think to check the uh, schedule. They have a special open house event later tonight. I think Chris Busher, Brad Keselowski will be at said event. I'm not sure if we'll be able to stick around, see when I was sort of planning this trip a few months ago, I just went on the Roush Automotive Collection website and checked their hours to make sure they're open Monday through Friday. I didn't even think about the possibility of there being a special event. I mean, NASCAR is in their backyard after all. I should have known better, but uh, we're going to check out the Roush Automotive Collection. Oh, wow. I wasn't expecting this. You first walk in and it's a massive gift shop. Oh, and they have everything from Jack Roush merch to modern day RFK racing. Oh my gosh, the old school Roush racing. Look, oh, my wallet is about to hurt. Signed hats, Roush aviation. What don't they have? Look, these are all just signed by the cat in the hat himself. There's hanging here on the rack. What the, what the heck? Oh, this jacket. Oh, oh, you're kidding me. Oh my gosh. Okay, I need somebody to like steer me in the right direction here. I am a bit overwhelmed, but we're not gonna look at this right now. I wanna go inside the museum before it gets too busy and check out the actual car collection. I'm particularly excited about all the different NASCAR uh, pieces that are apparently on display. This museum is apparently free to enter. Look at this, there's a door right here. And just like that, you're in. Now they do recommend that you call ahead and try to either schedule an appointment or just let them know you're coming. Today is a special day though because they have that event going on later this evening. What the? <laughs> we'll get to the race cars in a second. What is this doing here? This is a, a ride vehicle from Remy's Ratatouille Adventure at Epcot or at Disneyland Paris depending on who you ask, I think, right? Or am I crazy? It's not labeled, but uh, I know Roush, obviously they have their hands on a ton of different things beyond just racing. Do they help like manufacture or design that ride? If so, that's awesome. Okay, sorry for getting distracted. Let's get back to business. Oh my gosh, where do we even start? There is way too much to see. Check this out. The NASCAR stuff is immediately on your left when you walk in, Chris Busher. 17 car this is probably from 2021 i would imagine final year of the gen 6 fresh off the racetrack doesn't say which track this car was last used at but you can even see it's still got the tape over the uh, the grill openings that's illegal you can't do that anymore check this out the fenway group joined roush racing i want to say 2008 2007 my mistake the start of 2007 so really the moment they begin you know dabbling with the cot the big wing the car tomorrow fenway joined the roush group roush fenway racing check this boston red sox paint scheme out this is the car that carl edwards drove out onto the field at fenway park to celebrate the occasion later that year i did look up a few photos before i came and this car is the main reason I'm here. Actually, both of these cars, but especially this pretty pink one. I said I was a 17 fan. I was not lying. Matt Kenseth's 2012 Talladega win. You remember that finish? Tony Stewart throwing the block. Huge crash, unfortunately, took out 20 plus cars. But this pink vehicle right here, driven by Matt the Brat Kenseth, now a NASCAR Hall of Famer, was able to sneak by unscathed to win. That was his first and I think only Talladega victory. It was also his second to last win with Roush Fenway Racing, the team that he won a championship for in 2003, won Rookie of the Year, and also in 2009 and 2012, speaking of 2009, he also won the Daytona 500 for Roush in this car. Oh my gosh, and look at all the signatures. The whole team signed it, and it's still right here. Look at that, Jack Roush. I always love that he signs USA. I have a die cast signed by Jack Roush, and yep, USA. American born. As a huge Matt Kenseth fan, these are two incredible pieces of Matt Kenseth history. This was Matt Kenseth's first Daytona 500 win. It was a rain shortened win, but in case there was any doubt, he went out a few years later in 2012 and won that Daytona 500, which actually won, I think, a little more than 500 miles. You can see that 2012 Best Buy Daytona 500 winning car on display at Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing in Concord, North Carolina. So I've seen that one a few times. I've never seen this one in person. 
That's so cool. I am geeking out more than a little bit right now. This is beautiful. Oh my gosh, you can see where he basically cleared himself in front of Clint Boyer. What? That's crazy. Uh, maybe maybe should have gotten penalized for that, but uh, no harm, no foul. They kept going. Can't touch these cars, and honestly, I'm not 100% sure they want me standing in between them like this, but boy, look how close you can get to these remarkable pieces of NASCAR history. Wow. I want to see where's, let's see, we've got tons of signatures on here. Where's Matt's signature? I think that's it. Yep, there it is, right there. It's a little faded. Matt Kenseth, 17. Gosh, okay. I know not everyone watching are Matt Kenseth fans like I am, so we're gonna move on. <laughs> Next to us here is Ryan Newman. Hey, when he drove for Roush, was this 2020? 21, I believe. I'm like a year off on all my dates. 2021, paint scheme right here. Oh, some Jamie McMurray love. Oh my gosh, and this one still has the dried confetti. It's like almost fused itself with the vinyl wrap. Jamie McMurray's Summer Daytona win, 2007. Unbelievable stuff. They've got one more Matt Kenseth Bush Series car here on the, on the side. See, I've seen the destroyed version of this paint scheme from when Kenseth went flipping at Talladega, I wanna say 2009? Yes, 2009. And that car used to be on display at Matt Kenseth's museum in Wisconsin, although that museum I don't believe is there anymore, so I'm not sure where the wrecked Talladega car is, but it was this paint scheme. It's pretty cool. One of the most iconic Bush Series cars ever, in my opinion. This was actually Roush's 200th NASCAR win. Mark Martin got it for him at Texas Motor Speedway. Mark Martin, of course, a NASCAR Hall of Famer, still sits second on the all-time Bush or Xfinity Series wins list. Roush doesn't have an Xfinity Series team currently, although maybe Brad Keselowski would like to do something about that, but they've had plenty of success in their history. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. won two Xfinity Series. Well, actually, then it was the Nationwide Series, back-to-back -back Nationwide Series championships, and I'm not sure if they have a car in here, but I know Chris Buescher also won the title in 2015. Check out these Mark Martin cars. These are cup cars, Winston cup cars, Winston Cup Series to be exact. Mark Martin's Vaveline colors, especially here on the Thunderbird, have always been some of my favorite, although I'm kind of partial to this one, which I think is from the year 2000, I want to say. Uh, maybe, maybe there's a sign that says so. Correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. I think this is a, a 2000 car. Dang it, I think I was a year off again, 1999. <laughs> I promise, I'm a big Roush fan. I'm just, just a, just a tad, tad bit off today. Hmm, the Japanese flag here on the B post may give away where this car was run. NASCAR brought the Winston Cup Series to Twin Ring Motegi in Japan in the mid 90s. I think it's safe to say this was Mark Martin's car. Oh, another cool piece of Mark Martin history from his early Winston Cup days. I, there's no sign, I don't think this is the car, but I know his first Cup Series win came in a Stroh's Light paint scheme that probably looked very similar to this one. I believe his first win came in 1989. Let me double check, I've been a year off on everything else. Yes, 1989, I just double checked. So uh, this is sure to bring back some memories. Oh, check it out, some Greg Biffle schemes. This is the Greg Biffle scheme I honestly most associate with Greg Biffle. When I first started watching NASCAR in 2004, 2005, didn't he finish second in points in 05? That was the year that uh, all five Roush cars, they had five cup cars at that time, cup drivers, all five of them qualified for the 10 driver chase for the Nextel Cup. I think this is a 2005 car. I guess it could be maybe 2004. It's a, it's a Taurus, so it's not, it's not 2006, but it could be a 2004. I think it's 2005. Anyway, this is the paint scheme, the look that I most commonly remember Greg Biffle for in my early years. There's honestly not quite as many Carl Edwards pieces I would have expected. We saw that, you know, Boston Red Sox one. We have an Xfinity, or I'm sorry, Bush Series car right here. The Dish Network number 60. And right next to it is a very special scheme, Kurt Busch, the Sharpie Ford Taurus. Oh, I always loved this, this look. And seeing it in person, you can, I don't know if the camera is gonna do it justice, but it's, a, it's got a little glitter, it's got a little shimmer to it. You ever use like a gold or a silver Sharpie and it kind of has that different finish? I mean, this, this car looks like it was drawn on with Sharpies. I'm pretty sure this paint scheme is from his championship season. The gold kind of gives it away. So I guess this is a 2004 car from the year Kurt Busch won his uh, NASCAR Cup Series title. It was Jack Roush's second Cup Series championship, his second in a row. Kenseth and Busch went back to back in the mid 2000s. Man, that was Roush at its peak. 
Roush Racing has gone through a lot of changes. Obviously Fenway coming in, now Keselowski. And with Brad, yes, they're a two-car team, but they just won the most recent race at Richmond with Chris Buescher. They seem to be ticking up once again, which as a longtime Roush fan, it's really cool to see that. Outside of the gift shop, there's not much RFK here. I guess, uh, you know, next-gen cars are still in short supply. They're all in the shop in Charlotte. <laughs> But look at this Jeff Burton sit-go car. I'm glad there's some Jeff Burton uh, representation here in the uh, Roush Automotive Collection. Something about that 99 font just looks late 90s, early 2000s. Also, check out how tall this spoiler is. I have a pretty big hand, but I mean, that's, I don't know, at least a six, seven inch tall spoiler, probably. And while I'm sitting here thinking about spoilers, I turn back around, I forgot. Remember when the Xfinity cars, the nationwide cars had rabbit ears on the back? And remember when like Toyota, I think it was, I think they just had this one up, like they had the option to remove this little rabbit ear section so they'd be, you know, skewed out to this side. Yeah, those were weird days. I kind of forgot about that, honestly. I am honestly blown away right now so much NASCAR history right here. I feel like I'm reliving my childhood back when I would play the uh, EA Sports NASCAR games and you could like play as one driver but then switch between teammates. Like I'd start as Kenseth, I could switch and control Biffle, I could switch to Mark Martin, I could switch to Jamie McMurray. Yeah, I feel like I'm just you know in the main menu again selecting my paint scheme. Besides all the NASCAR stuff, I'll take a look in a moment. There's some other really cool car history in here but I'm not like the smartest car guy so I don't have as much to say on that. I'll oh, check this out. This is Kurt Busch drove this truck Look at the X side colors. That looks so cool. I also love the F series on the splitter. Can we bring that back? That's kind of sharp. Oh, they have a sign. Kurt Busch, 2000 Rookie of the Year. Hey, all right. Also, it's fun to see Craftsman on a truck from 23 years ago, and they're back this year. They're once again the title sponsor of the truck series. It's come full circle. You know, I completely glossed over this. They do have another Carl Edwards piece. It was this his, uh, he won, I remember his first truck race in a white truck. I don't know if this is the truck. I don't see a sign or anything, but yeah, I do remember at least seeing the highlights. Oh, there you go, there's a little rookie bumper, <laughs> a little yellow tag. I do remember seeing clips of Edwards' first win being in an all white truck. So I don't know if this is the one, but this is a white truck that I imagine Carl Edwards did drive at one point, potentially to victory lane. Just noticed this display case along the back wall. I remember having a Matt Kenseth Martian Manhunter die cast. Not that I have hardly anything to complain about, but that is one thing about this place is there's not a ton of signage. I mean, maybe you could ask like the front desk and they'll explain to you what every piece is, but like you kind of have to, like I've been sitting here Googling occasionally to make sure I get dates right. Okay, I want to venture into this half of the room because I don't know, are we gonna see like a Ford Model T on display? Oh, is that what this is? It's a, <laughs> it's a, horseless carriage we should still be calling cars that honestly horseless carriage yeah it's longer it's easier to just say car but th that's just so much cooler dang that xi partnership goes back way further than i realized <laughs> if you're a big car guy this is the place for you if you're like me and you're a total noob when it comes to half this stuff uh <laughs> i can admire how beautiful this car looks must be extraordinarily expensive, uh, but don't ask me to tell you uh, its history or even what exactly, what exactly it is, what kind of model it is. Gosh, I am so tempted to do it. I'm not, but I really, I really want to squeeze it. Ford pickup from 1950. Wow. Oh, this is a must-have for any diecast fan. A one-fourth scale <laughs> Ford Taurus. <laughs> These were used on TV in 2003, but man, that would, I mean, it wouldn't fit on any of my shelves, but hey, I'd try to make room. <laughs> Gonna go ahead and head out of the museum because I want to take a closer look at this gift shop. Man, look at all the old Matt Kenseth stuff. 50 cents for a, a, a car cup holder coaster. This is the most Jack Roush thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Do you think it'd be illegal if I bought one of these and put it on the windshield of my Toyota Camry? <laughs> gonna head out uh, I did pick up a few things I'll give you guys a little merch haul in just a moment uh, I was thinking about sticking around it's 3 30 drivers aren't gonna show up for the autograph session until 7 I believe so uh, I would stick around but I'm not really in the market <laughs> for a Chris Buescher Brad Keselowski autograph although that's really cool fans are starting to show up in a uh, significant numbers even though the special event doesn't begin for another 90 minutes look at all these cars on display 
I was talking to somebody inside who works for Roush, who works here, who says that you know they do this event every year right before the Michigan race or races, but this is the first year since 2019 that the drivers have been able to come. I imagine COVID, of course, messed things up, other schedule conflicts. So uh, that's pretty cool. And the fans, I imagine, are going to turn out in the uh, like big room where all the cars were. They had uh, probably 20 or so fans already lined up for autographs, even though, again, that's not for three and a half hours. People are already starting to reserve their spots in line. So uh, fans, Roush fans, RFK fans, Ford fans are a passionate bunch. Awesome to visit Jack Roush's backyard, but time to head out. Okay, friends, here's my haul from the Roush Automotive Collection <laughs> gift shop. I showed some restraints, so I'm proud of myself, uh, but I did pick up this Roush Racing old logo, uh, long or more like three quarter sleeve shirt. I love this logo. I think this will look good. For like five bucks, I got this Matt Kenseth visor. My mom wears visors like this all the time around the house when she's out doing yard work or going to the store. So I figured she should wear a Matt Kenseth one from here on out. And then lastly, <laughs> yes, I did pick up the cup holder <laughs> thing. Cup holder coaster, it was 50 cents. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna use it. What the heck, like, I'm losing money if I don't buy this. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, there's my haul from the Roush Automotive Collection. That, that wasn't the point of going, it wasn't, I didn't even know they had a gift shop to be quite honest. I just knew they had a big room full of historic cars, race cars, everything in between. Even that random Epcot ride vehicle, that was a surprise. Again, the Roush Automotive Collection is free to visit. They just recommend that you call ahead of time. 1000% if you're a race fan, it's worth stopping by, especially if you're anywhere near Detroit, just passing through, just passing by. It's not too far out of your way. I highly recommend checking this place out. I'm sorry we're not staying for the RFK fan event, but uh, that is just a special occasion. They only do that once a year. I think they do have other like little car shows and things throughout the season, but this is the only one that's you know NASCAR themed with, of course, the Cup Series racing at nearby Michigan International Speedway in a couple days. But thank you all so much for tuning in to this video. Be sure to subscribe subscribe if you're new. I will see you all at the racetrack Saturday and Sunday. Have a wonderful rest of your day, folks.